Hi everyone, Tanisha Coffey, AKA The Lofty Entrepreneur here, and this is The Lofty Entrepreneur Podcast. Thank you for joining me. All right, so as usual, we are bringing you some of the best tips, tools, and advice when it comes to being an entrepreneur, whether you're a new entrepreneur or whether you're an aspiring entrepreneur, we have got the tips, tools, and advice for you. So before I get into that, I want to remind you, go ahead and click the subscribe button so that you're able to hear the podcast whenever they come out. And if you're watching on YouTube, that you don't miss our videos when they come out as well. Um, So go ahead and do that for me. Now, today we are back with more from Women Action Takers founder, Linda Sunshine West. Now, last time when we talked with her, she was telling us about her journey and her story. And it truly is inspirational because she started her entrepreneurial journey later in life. Most people think that they have to kind of start early and just do that one thing. Linda's story is amazing and it's encouraging and inspiring. So if you have not listened to that, if you have not watched that, go do so right now. But No, don't do it right now. Stay with me right now and then go do that in a few minutes. Right now, what we're going to do is I have gotten her to come back and she is going to share some some of her golden gems. So uh, everybody, please welcome back Miss Linda Sunshine West, a successful woman action taker. Linda, thank you for joining me today. Thanks again. I appreciate you. Thanks, Tanisha, for having me back. This is so awesome. I, you know, I love any opportunity I can to share my voice with the world, which is part of my mission is to help, you know, 5 million women share their voice with the world. So let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So Women Action Takers is growing rapidly. And after getting to know you, I know wholeheartedly, I wholeheartedly believe it's because of your philosophy. Um, just how you move as an entrepreneur. And I've often heard late, a lot lately, but particularly from you, that people should do what resonates with them. You've said that a lot. And that was a gem that I've taken from you. What do you mean by that? Well, we as human beings, you know, were everything on this planet is energy. And so when we talk about resonance, it's about energy. So if you're doing something that you don't feel good about it, your body will tell you. If you really tune in, your body will share with you that, you know what, I'm not really liking this. Or um, I had a situation just recently where somebody who I've known for several years, she showed her true colors in a different way. And I was like, I don't know if I can be aligned with this person. And so it's really when we come to this decision that we have to make, um, you know, for ourselves to make sure that we are living in alignment with who we are. And that alignment is a lot of times they'll call it like the flow, living in flow or the flow zone. And it's when you, when things are going really smooth and, you know, nothing can um, sway you one way or the other, that's like the flow. And sometimes that can be scary because, it's too easy. Things can't be this easy, but really it can be easy if you allow it to flow. And so in that situation, um, it was really interesting. You know, that, that woman is she, I was going to have her participate in one of my books and, um, and I was excited to have her because I knew she had a big following and I knew her story and just thought it was an incredible story. And then she started bad mouthing some people, some people who Mm -hmm. she had worked with And I had to pull back and I said, you know, I'm sorry, I'm, I can't have you in the book. And she said, why? And I said, because if you badmouth those people, what's to say you won't badmouth me. And because of that, I'm not in alignment with you, who you are and what you're all about. And that was hard for me to say that. I don't normally say things like that to people, but it was really interesting because about three hours later, she came back to me and I had messaged her. It was a voice message that I sent her. And she said, I played your message to my husband because I was so mad at you. I played my husband, my message for my husband. And he told me that you were right. Cause I was right. You don't bad mouth people, you know? So anyway, I, I felt out of alignment with her. She has millions of followers. She was going to put me on the cover of her magazine, like all this stuff. And I made a decision. So here we go. I made a decision that do I want to align with somebody who has that type of following and, and uh, let, uh, let my own personal um, integrity go? Or do I want to make sure I stay in integrity? And I realized that my integrity is worth way more than one follower. 
or a million followers or 10 million followers. It's worth way more than that. So I stood stood on it, even though she said I was right. I still said, I still don't know that I can trust that you won't talk about me behind my back. So I'm going to have to pass on this one. And I think that's hard. That's really hard when you're an entrepreneur sometimes. One, to have that that honesty and, you know, in, in that case, it doesn't sound like there was a bridge burned, but, you know, you always feel like there's a risk of doing that, but it's not really a risk. It's, it's, it's just a, it's just a path that you don't want to go down anyway. And, you know, so I think that that's um, great, a great way to kind of show it kind of goes to the notion of firing your clients. You know, sometimes, you know, as an entrepreneur, you, you get to decide who you work for, I mean, or, or who you work with. Um, and that was a perfect example of firing your clients, not working with somebody who you knew was not quite the right fit for that particular project. And that's not to say that, the, you know, the person overall is bad, but, you know, sometimes people will have their seasons where they're doing something that is just not quite aligned with what you want to align with, like you said. And I think it's really important for people to understand it's okay to say no, it's okay to distance. It's more sure. than okay. It's necessary. It is necessary because we need to stand firm for who we are and what we're all about. So I like, I'm going to share this story as often as possible. You know why? Because then people will understand that I have a boundary. So people set boundaries all the time, right? I remember when I was a you know, young mother, I would set these boundaries for my kids. And then every once in a while I would you know give in but uh, my dad always gave in. My dad, every time he said no, it meant yes. I mean, I knew he was going to change his mind. So I would go to him. I would ask him something. He would say no. I would go in my room. I would cry. I would bawl my eyes out. And he'd come in and he'd say, I changed my mind. Like that was the pattern that he created for me to realize. So when I met my, my husband, we've been together for 32 years. I would thought my husband would do the same thing. He'd say no. And then he'd change his mind. He didn't do that. He set a boundary and he stuck with it. And so that was an extremely important thing for me to learn that just because somebody says no, it doesn't mean yes. And I know in business, they say no means not now or, or another opportunity or um, keep going, keep going until they say yes. You know, I don't want to like beat down somebody's you know door to get them to say yes to me. I want them to say yes because they want to say yes. But the reason I, I will share that story is because it shows my integrity. This is where I stand. I will not tolerate people talking bad about other people around me because it makes me feel uncomfortable. So what does this say about me? This says that I don't talk bad about other people. Now I'm sharing a story. I'm not saying the name. I'm not talking about the exact situation. I'm just talking about a story, right? But this person, or, you know, she said specific names. So what happened is in my mind, I'm like, I don't know those people, but if I ever encounter them, I don't know if I'm going to be able to trust them. You know, that was what was going. And I said, wait a minute, I make my own judgments on people. I'm not going to allow somebody's drama to affect me. And so by me sharing the story, it shows who I am, what I'm all about. I have a high integrity and it's very important for me to live that way the rest of my life, you know, because that's who I am. That's what I'm all about. And, and if people don't like that, that's okay because there's 7.7 .7 billion people on this planet. I do not need to have everybody like me. Right. And I think that's one of the, one of the biggest lessons that entrepreneurs need to know and learn going in is that it's okay to be who you are and the people who are meant to work with you will eventually come to you. And you may have to work on attracting those people and weeding them out and even figuring out for yourself, you know, who those people are and, and what those scenarios are. But it will come if you are true to who you are versus trying to be something that you think you're supposed to or have to be or need to be for a scenario that you think that you want. Because, you know, like we've talked about before, sometimes what you want, what you say you want, what you think you want isn't really what you wanted. So I think that's hugely important. Now, I know that, um, I, so I participated in your masterminds. Um, I remember going, you know, the very first time and it was hugely different because I've been making my rounds, you know, kind of dipping my toe into different uh, masterminds, different networking groups, and the energy and the vibe was completely different um, with your group. And, um, you know, just from being in those sessions, I know that you're a great 
motivator. And, you know, we've talked about how entrepreneurship can be a roller coaster, lots of ups and downs. And I know we talked about it even in your mastermind. Sometimes people will just get kind of stuck in a certain place for various reasons. So I would love if you have a tip or two about kind of getting unstuck and being able to move forward. Yeah, definitely. Great question. Um, and first of all, I want to commend you for looking around, you know, for, for diving into different um, opportunities to see what different programs are about. Because a lot of times, uh, like my myself, I just jumped into everything. You know, when I first started, I, I had to know this because they, they were saying I had to know this. <laughs> so I believe that I had to know everything that there was to know about business. And um, I wanted to mention one thing before we get into that, because one of the things that I uh, of saying that I said during one of our mastermind sessions, or it was, it was a clubhouse challenge that we were doing. And because um, I do these clubhouse challenges, which I absolutely love. But Amazing. one thing I said. Amazing. Uh, you're you're going to you're, you're changing my business. So thank you for that, everybody. We will make sure you get details on how you can join that. I'm sorry. Go. <laughs> oh, yeah. But there was there was one thing I said during one of those sessions that I thought, oh, my God, that was so good. <laughs> you know? And because it was um, one of the ladies was talking about something. I said, here's the thing. You if you don't if you don't stand for something, you will be known for nothing. And so we need to step into like, who am I? What am I all about? What is my mission? What is my vision? What is my passion? Who am I? These are so, such important things to know because you are you, no matter where you go, you're going to be you know, doing whatever it is you in, are doing in life. So whether it's having a business or you're working a job or, or not, right? These are things that you're going to be doing. And that by your choices, every choice you make leads you to what you're doing today. And so one thing I like to say is um, don't beat yourself up over the choices that you've made. Don't beat yourself up over the choices you made because in the moment you made that decision, it was right for you in that moment. Now, 10 minutes later, something could have changed or four months or seven years later, something could have changed. You could have been like, why did I make that decision? You know, I don't know how many times I thought that you know, previously in my life. But I realized that every single decision I made at the time was the right decision in that moment. Now, if you made a decision and you knew in that moment that it was the wrong decision, then just own up to it and say, you know what, that was the wrong decision. I'm not going to do that anymore. From now on, I'm going to make sure that I weigh things out. However you weigh, everybody's different. We're all different. I can give you a formula, but that's my formula of what works for me. But decide and figure out like what is right for me to do. Sometimes what's right for you to do is going to feel extremely uncomfortable. And that's what you're talking about, Tanisha. Getting stuck, right? We get stuck because we feel uncomfortable to make the change. Now, the comfort zone, that comfort zone doesn't always mean it's good. It just means it's comfortable and familiar. And I'll use my mom as a great example. My mom was with my dad for 55 years. 55 years. He was abusive. He was an alcoholic. He was verbally, emotionally, and mentally abusive and physically. And 55 years. When my dad took his last breath, the first words my mom said were, thank God the bastard is dead. I was standing right next to her. Those were her first words, but guess what? That was her comfort zone. So the question to ask yourself is, do I like my comfort zone? Because comfort zone can be a great thing if you're living a great life. But if you're not living a great life and you're living in a situation, whether it's your business and you have clients that you are just like, Ugh, I got to get on a call with this client. Ugh, I got to do this. That's not a way to run a business. I got to do this, right? I actually had a client, uh, Amanda, absolutely amazing. I helped her to triple her income in two years. So uh, she was on government aid and she was a bookkeeper. And um, I can share her story because she has shared her story and she's given me testimonials. So I, I'll, I'll share her story. But she was a bookkeeper and she had these horrible clients that every time she was meeting with them, she couldn't stand it. Um, she had to chase them down for money. It was just a bad situation. And one day I looked at her and said, Amanda, how do you feel about firing your clients? How do you feel about that? I can't do that. I can't do that. Like, that's the only money I have coming in and, and this and that, you know, so there were all these different fears that were coming up and she had allowed that to become her comfort zone. 
So I said, okay, how about if we do this? What if you let go just one of them, the one that is not even paying you? Guess what? It's okay to let go a client who's not paying you. So you just go and you let that person know that this isn't working and you're going to go ahead and stop doing their work. And she did that. And she felt so empowered when she let that client go, even though the client wasn't paying them, she knew it was a bad situation. So even though she knew it was a bad situation, she let that client go and she felt empowered. So guess what? She started firing her clients. And as she was firing bad clients, amazing clients started showing up. She got her biggest client within like two weeks. They just like basically knocked on her door. She didn't even know who they were. And she started working with them and they paid in advance. So she didn't have to worry about chasing them down. Every time she would come to meet with them, they all were already ready for her. Like they were organized. They knew exactly what they needed to do and they respected her time and they were ready for her. She fired one of her hugest, hugest accounts. She was so scared to do it. But now she is, since then she, well, she doubled her income in one year. And then the following year tripled her income. And I believe it's because of the energy, the positive energy that she had, and she knew who she wanted to attract. And that was one of the things I helped her with is to, to move into that space of empowered, feeling empowered and to making the decision of who I want to work with. And it's completely changed her whole life. She ended up, I mean, this isn't a good thing maybe, but it is. She ended up divorcing her husband that she wanted to divorce for 10 years because she was finally moving into a positive state of mind where she wasn't feeling beholden to those people in her life, but instead she was empowered and she was, she knew that she could do the work and, and make a difference and, and also work with the people that she loved to work with. So that's what I say. <laughs> that's amazing. All right. So I want to talk a little bit deeper because was she one of your mastermind members or is she just like a one-on-one -on -one coaching client? She was a mastermind member. So she um, belonged to my original. She was the OG. <laughs> she was my OG mastermind. And I really didn't, as I look back, I didn't really know what I was doing with business, but I knew what I was doing with people. And that's, I think the difference for my mastermind is like one of the differences that I have is that I, I'm hearing people and I not only hear you, but I, I um, am able to hear what you're not saying. And I think that's a key because I can just like sensing body language or the words that are coming out of your mouth, right? And so with Amanda, it was really, it wasn't about her business as much as it was about her mindset moving from the, I can't change. I can't do anything different. I'm too scared into the, I got this. I can do this. Thank you for believing in me. She hopped on a, um, a call with one of her soon to be clients. And I said, you know, before you hop on that call, give me a call just like 10 minutes before, and I'm going to talk to you. And I talked her through what to say to, to him. I talked her through when the money part came up. See, she, at that time, she was charging, um, I think, $30 an hour for book, book keep, bookkeeping services. And she said she didn't want to raise her rates. And, and I was like, well, just raise it $5. Just do $35, okay? Just do that. Okay, I can do that. And she was scared. And so what happened was after I was done talking to her and everything, she got on that call with the guy, but she felt so energized because I helped to move her into that mindset of positivity, of I got this, of I can charge more because she had been charging $30 like all along. And so she said, when I, first of all, she called me and she said, I got the client. It was so awesome. And then when he asked me how much I said, $50 an hour. And he said, okay. Oh so my God. Mindset. Yeah. yeah. So, so how do you, because that's, that's a big thing. I think that was discussed um, as part of the mastermind, just, you know, how do you, how do you move yourself into value? You can know that you have value and you can know that you can give value, but even positioning yourself and having the confidence to communicate that, to command that, you know, from your clients. So what I want to know, what was it in that conversation that helped her to say, I got this, you know? Yeah. And you know, I think part of that is that, um, I believed in her and I gave her what I could, I gave her everything I could to say, 
I believe in you. You got this. Just go out there, stand on confidence. And then what happens is when we get pumped up by somebody else, because sometimes we need that. I've become my own best cheerleader, so I no longer need that, but I used to need that all the time. And so when we have somebody in our corner who really has us, understands us, and believes in us, and they instill that belief in us to believe in ourselves. And then we've got momentum behind us because now um, I just got off a call with Linda. I'm feeling pumped. I'm ready to go. And there's no time space in between, right? Because like the second we got off our call, she moved into calling him. So there was no time space in between and for, for her to start beating herself up, for her to start doubting herself. And with that said, you know, I had an, another story of this uh, woman, Sheba, who um, she was working at a job and she had been there for nine years and had never gotten a raise in nine years, but she didn't want a raise. She told her boss she didn't want a raise because if she got a raise, then she would stop getting her government aid. A lot of times government aid will stop us from making that movement forward. But so, so with Sheba, uh, she had this opportunity to be interviewed for a job. And I said, 10 minutes before your interview, I'm going to meet you in the lobby. And I drove all the way up to where she was, met her in the lobby, and I pumped her up. So when she went in and she asked for that money, she ended up getting a $20,000 increase in salary just like that. But she had that confidence because, again, I instilled that confidence in her to go in and ask for what she was worth. I was like, you are not making enough money, girl. You need to be making more. And it's completely changed her life. She doesn't re rely on government aid anymore. Since then, she's gotten, I don't even know how many raises, but she just loves what she's doing and she's excited. She's getting paid for it. All right. So it is abundantly clear what people need to know from you right now is more about this mastermind because clearly you are absolutely changing people's lives with how you're doing things. So if you could take a moment, tell us more about, you know, your, your mastermind, your goals, your focus and all that great stuff, please. Yeah, my focus, thank you so much. My focus is to, my, my real focus is to positively impact and, and help women to share their voice with the world. I have a goal of 5 million. And one of the ways I do that is through my mastermind. I also write collaboration books. But the mastermind, I love this because I'm the type of person, one thing I realized about myself is I'm way better in group settings than I am one-on-one. -on -one. And so this is one thing for you to think about yourself. If you're a coach out there and you're not sure which route to go, if you're like, I don't know if I want to do one-on-one -on -one or group, you know, try them both out, see what works best for you. But um, I just, I love bringing them together and then finding out, you know, what the challenges they are, they have going forward and then helping them to you know, blast through those challenges. And again, mindset is going to be most of it. Mindset will be most of it. So if we can break through those different mindset issues that we have, and then to gain that confidence to move forward, you know, I talk about this all the time is that with, with clarity and confidence, you know, th those are really the, the keys to that success because you can have clarity and no confidence and people will know that you're not confident. You can have confidence without clarity and people will be like, I don't understand what they're talking about. They sure are confident, but I don't understand what they're talking about it. So it's really that combination of the two that it's extremely important to hone in on. And so, you know, hopefully during my mastermind sessions, this is one of the things I help. It doesn't happen overnight, but, you know, one of the things that I hope it does is it helps you to get more clear and more clear and more clear. It took me five and a half years. It's not going to take you five and a half years if you ha get help, but if you're doing it by yourself, it may take you five and a half years or more. Absolutely. So I would love for you to share. Um, we're going to go ahead and wrap up here. My, my young sir is getting a little finicky. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and wrap up the interview, but I definitely want for people to know how can they join your mastermind? I'm at womenactiontakers.com, or they can email me at Linda, L-Y-N-D-A, at womenactiontakers.com. And I'm all over the place as Women Action Takers. You'll find me on Clubhouse, LinkedIn, uh, you know, Facebook, Instagram. I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. So just hunt me down. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. And for everybody who's listening and watching, I will make sure to put all of this information in the description so you have easy access to it. And um, as I've said before, I have participated. Um, her sessions are amazing and it they're professional, but they're also personal. And I think that's a huge, huge difference that you'll find in a lot of the masterminds. Um, you know, people kind of stay a little bit buttoned up. That's not even an option when you're working with Linda. So just be prepared to come in and really do the work. The more open you are, 
the more she can open you up and help you on your journey. So thank you, Linda, so much for joining me today. I truly appreciate you. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm Tanisha Coffey, a.k.a. The Lofty Entrepreneur, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye, everybody.